In this video, we're going to look at an example of the limit comparison test. We're going to use a test to check out whether this series, n equals 1 to infinity of sine 1 over n, converges or diverges. Now this function, sine 1 over n, that's not a common function, it's not one that we're easily familiar with. So whether the series, the infinite series, based on this function converges or diverges, is not something that's immediately obvious just by looking at the uh, function here. So we're going to explore this example. It turns out it's quite a difficult example, brings in some other things we need to consider, and we're going to work through that in a moment. Before we get to that, we're going to consider the slightly easier example, just to get a feel for how the limit comparison test works. Before we get to that example, let's just think about what is the limit comparison test. So if you're trying to determine whether an infinite series, so let's say n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, if you're trying to determine whether or not that series converges or diverges, which is generally the question that we're asking with infinite series, then one way you can do that is by comparing this to another series. And that other series has to be one that you know whether um, it converges or diverges. So ahead of time, you choose a series that you already know the result for. You know the convergence or divergence result for that series. So let's say that second series, the one that we're choosing, is n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n. But bear in mind that we're choosing this because we know the result. So we're going to have to have some kind of knowledge of certain series which either converge or diverge so that we can pull in and we already can be confident in the result. Well, the limit comparison test tells us that if we take the limit as n tends to infinity, of the sort of quotient, if you like, of these uh, terms, remember you would have like a sort of an actual function in here, and if you do the quotient of a sub n over b sub n and take that limit, depending on this result, you can then say whether or not your two series act in the same way, have the same behavior, i.e. both converge or diverge or not. And the result that we're looking for is that this limit comes out to be some finite positive value, okay? So you could say just the result has to be some um, finite and positive numerical value. So it doesn't say what it has to be. It doesn't have to be bigger than anything, smaller than anything. It just has to be positive and it has to be finite. So it can't be positive infinity, okay? So that's the only criteria. If that criteria is met, then you can say the two series behave in the same way. So for example, if our b sub n series diverges, and we run the limit comparison test in this way, there's going to be some algebra involved here, and we get this result, then we can say, okay, the result has been, the criteria has been met, the result therefore is that these two series have the same behavior. And if the behavior for the known series is divergence, then the behavior for the unknown series will also be uh, divergence. So, so that's how the test works, a really neat little test. Let's take that into this guy here. The first thing is then to think, right, what are some of the series that I know that I already know the result of? So a really common series to use in these tests are harmonic series. So in particular, the harmonic series, I guess, which is n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So there are various ways that you can work with a series to prove that it's divergent. But in particular, it's divergent because it's an example of what's called a p-series. So this is uh, generally called the harmonic series. Okay, you'll see that written in uh, textbooks and things. But it's also an example of a, a wider set of um, types of series called a, a p-series. And in a p-series, we're looking at the, the exponent on the n value here. The exponent here is 1. In a p-series, that exponent has to be strictly greater than 1 for convergence. So because this is equal to 1 in the harmonic series, this p-series test shows that this diverges. So we're going to choose that as our so a b sub n series here. So we're going to compare our series with sigma sum n equals 1, infinity of 1 over n. Okay, so this is basically our a sub n, this is our b sub n, sub n. We're just going to run through what the limit comparison task asks us to do. So we're going to take the, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n. Okay, and just working through the algebra, so that's going to be the limit as n tends to infinity of a sub n is this guy, divided by b sub n. 
So we've got basically n over n squared plus 1 being divided. Just to save a bit of space, I'm going to write my division this way. So divided by b sub n, which is 1 over n. Now one thing you'll see a lot in these questions, because the nature of the kind of formula, the method has a divide in it, you're often going to be dividing by a fraction. So remember that algebraically is a little trick. You can just um, take the reciprocal of the fraction and multiply by it. So just to pull my work in over here to make some space, that's going to become the limit as n tends to infinity of n over n squared plus 1. Instead of dividing by 1 over n, we're going to multiply by n over 1, which is just obviously n. Multiplying these two guys together and working through the algebra, we would then get the limit as n tends to infinity of n squared. So multiplying the two numerators together, n squared over n squared plus 1. So what does that come out to be? Well, there's various ways to evaluate that. Probably the neatest and most common way would just be to divide that fraction top and bottom by n squared. If you do that, I mean, you're allowed to do that. It's just an equivalent fraction. You can always divide a fraction or multiply it top and bottom by the same thing. Divide in the top by n squared and you get 1. Divide in the bottom by n squared and you get n squared divided by n squared is 1. 1 divided by n squared is 1 over n squared. That form makes it a lot more obvious as you take the limit as n tends to infinity. 1 over n squared is going to tend to 0. That's going to leave you with basically just 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay, so what have we done there? Well, we've run our limit comparison test. It's come out to be a finite number and positive, so it's met this criteria. That tells us then that our two series, the original series, this guy here, and the series we were comparing with have got the same behavior. We know this is the harmonic series, which we know diverges. So therefore, our original series has to, from the limit comparison test, have the same behavior, so it also then diverges. Okay, so that hopefully that example helps show you how this test actually works in practice. There's always a little bit of algebra in the middle, and in this example, there's going to be a little bit more algebra to do. Um, so let's just not waste any time and get straight on to the next example. So um, it kind of immediately looks a little bit more difficult because it's got this trig function and then this other function inside. We're going to take a similar approach and then we're also going to compare it with the harmonic series at 1 over n. So we again, we know that already diverges, so that's going to be our comparison. So just going straight into setting up our criteria. So we're going straight to this point here. So we're taking the limit as n tends to infinity of our a sub n over b sub n. This is our a sub n function, so this is going to be sine of 1 over n divided by our b sub n function, which is 1 over n. And again, we can just kind of use that little um, sort of uh, reciprocal trick, or we could use that reciprocal trick. I think actually we might just leave that one in this form and consider something um, a little different for this question. So we're, we're trying to evaluate a limit here as n tends to infinity, but if you notice here that as n tends to infinity, 1 over n would uh, tend to 0. So just thinking a little bit of almost side work in here. So the limit as n tends to infinity of sine 1 over n, well that's going to be the limit, um, well actually it's not going to be the limit, it's going to be the sine of at 0, because as n tends to infinity, 1 over n tends to 0. That's giving you the sine of 0 for the limit. I, didn't, I was going to write limit again. I don't need the limit anymore. The sine of 0, but the sine of 0, think about the sine function, is 0. Okay, so let's just park the idea for a moment. And considering the limit of our denominator, 1 over n, that's going to be the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over n. Well, again, as n tends to infinity, 1 over n tends to 0. So it's giving you 0. So what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is that the kind of behavior here, if you like, is 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is what we call an indeterminate form. So indeterminate, indeterminate <laughs> form. Okay, so it's an indeterminate form. In other words, if you end up with like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, that is not giving you the limit. The limit of this is not zero. It's really tempting to say that zero over zero is zero, but it's not zero because you can't divide by zero. So these are all examples of indeterminate forms. For an indeterminate form, we need an additional piece of working. In this case, what we're going to do is to use uh, something called uh, L'Hopital rule. So 
Um, L'Hopital's rule basically says that if you end up with an indeterminate form when you're taking a limit, what you can do instead is differentiate the, the top, the numerator and the denominator, take the limit of those derivatives and that might bypass the problem because it gives you the same result as the original limit. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of our numerator, which is sine 1 over x, the same with the denominator, and then reform our limit and see what we get. If we get a result we're looking for, great. Sometimes you've got to use L'Hopital's rule more than once. Hopefully with just one iteration we'll get what we're looking for. So this question is clearly more complicated. So far we've not done anything different to what we did over here. It's just that we got to a point where our limit was not could not be evaluated. It's in an indeterminate form. So we're doing this a little bit of more complex side work in here. Okay, so the derivative of 1 over x, that's also quite, uh, sine 1 over x, that's also quite complicated because you've got, a, basically you've got a composite function here. You might want to think of that as being uh, the derivative with respect to x of the sine of x to the minus 1, if that helps you out. So how do we do this type of derivative? Well, sine differentiates to uh, cosine. So it's going to be cosine of x to the minus 1, or 1... Um, over x if you prefer. But because this is a chain rule we're using here, we've got to multiply that by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. The derivative of x to the minus 1 is minus x to the minus 2. So we're going to be multiplying that by negative x to the minus 2 power like that. And you could rewrite that, but I think we'll just leave it in that form for, for the time being. Okay, so that's basically our derivative of the numerator. Let's take the derivative of the denominator. So a derivative with respect to x of just this bit, which is uh, 1 over x, which is basically a derivative with respect to x of this guy, which is x to the minus 1. So we already did that here. That comes out to be minus x to the minus 2. So how do we piece this back together with uh, L'Hopital's rule? Well, L'Hopital's rule says now you just take your limit. So the limit as n tends to infinity of no longer the original two functions, but now they're derivatives. So derivative here was cosine 1 over x times minus x to the minus 2 power. The derivative on the denominator was minus x to the minus 2 power. So what's going to happen there? Well, that guy and that guy are the same. In that fraction, they're just going to cancel leaving us just with the limit as n tends to infinity of cosine 1 over x. As n tends to infinity, 1 over x um, tends to, sorry, this should be the limit as x uh, tends to infinity here. So the limit as x tends to infinity of 1 over x, well, as x tends to infinity, 1 over x tends to 0. So this is just like what we had up here, but it's the cosine of 0. And you might think, well, aren't we just back now in the same scenario we had up here? Well, not quite. It looks similar, but the sine of 0 is 0, but the cosine of 0 is 1. So we've been able to get a numerical value that isn't 0. In other words, we're not now in the place of having another indeterminate form. So just to quickly recap what we've done so far, we've set up our attempt to use the limit comparison test, and that's fine. So nothing is different at this point. It just happened to be that it came out to be this indeterminate form 0 over 0. And we did that just by recognising that these both come to be 0. This is 0 and that's 0 if you take the limit. We've then pulled in a bit of side work in, which is this thing called L'Hopital's rule, which helps us to evaluate limits for indeterminate forms, work through that, and we've taken our limit again. This time, the limits come out to be 1. That means that we get the, the, the actual result of this, even though it came out to be an indeterminate form, is 1. It's just that by using that original method, we couldn't get to that result, but the result itself is 1. That's just like we had over here. The limits come out to be 1. For the limit comparison test, all we care about, again, is whether it's finite and positive. They don't always come out to be 1, by the way. <laughs> it's just that happens to be these are both 1. More importantly, it's a finite number, it's a positive number, therefore our two series behave in the same way. Because we chose the harmonic series here for our comparison, effectively our B sub n series, which we know diverges, then that tells us that our original series behaves in the same way by the limit comparison test, 
So this guy also diverges. So although that example looks quite technical and it looks a lot more complicated, it's actually just the same thing. It just happens to be that we got this indeterminate form in the middle, which meant a little bit more uh, side working than we had in this more straightforward example. Most examples tend to flow like this. This is just a little bit more challenging, pulling in some other material. But the limit comparison test is a really neat way of just checking whether uh, a series will converge. And just remember that you have to know the result of the series you're comparing it to. It's really tempting to pick out a series that looks a little bit like the series you want to work with. So for example here, if you divide top and bottom here by n, you end up and ignore the one, then you get one over n. So that's why we would choose one over n here. One over n here fits in quite well, just because there's a one over n in the original function. That's why we've chosen one over n for these. But the important thing is you've got to know the result. So don't be tempted to choose a comparison series which just looks like it fits in if you don't know the result because then that's not going to help. You need to know the result of your comparison series to then use the limit comparison test. So I hope that helps you understand the limit comparison test better than you did before. Any questions or comments just leave them in the box below.